This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Podcamp Pittsburgh. Learn about podcasting, social media, and so much more. Join us September 30th and October 1st. Find out more at podcamppittsburgh.com. Live from Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachford neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, it is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, a video and uh, podcaster here in the Pittsburgh area. This is a show where we get geeky talk tech and have some fun with some friends around the area that are into all kinds of stuff. Uh, Back in the studio is John Tachilla. He's the guy guru over at Big Bank International West Choir. How's it going today? Good, are good. Your, are, are you are so are subdued? Your, are all your updates processed? Are you all your updates? I will may all your updates be without errors or uh bricking. <laughs> yes, bricking is bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you this is a big day for you. We'll get into but, it, but yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll get into it. Well, okay, it's not as big for you because you've actually had these on beta for for a while. Yeah. So <laughs> uh Chris Whitlash is joining us here. On the couch in studio in the new studio for the very first time. Yeah, it's good to be in the new studio. Thank you for joining us. You, you, this My is pleasure. who's always uh, 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 we we often have your stories about virtual reality and, and and things over over the last several months. So it's good to get you in studio here. I don't know. Have you been on this show in person before in the uh, old studio? No, no. Actually, I skyped in every time I've been on. That's awesome what I cast, figure. So this is, First in studio, awesome cast. Nice, one. and of course, currently we, we talk about where, where where you're with currently. I'm with the Mon Valley Alliance. Mm-hmm. So we're an economic development nonprofit in the Mon Valley, and uh, we try to make things better there. And you do a lot of um, other things. You got a big tour coming up that we can talk about a little bit later uh, about the red light district in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I have some creative pursuits. Uh, <laughs> I have I have a little side project called Universal Wit, um, mm-hmm. which uh, we look at uh, immersive gaming and um, and uh, storytelling and and uh, some other fun things. We try to give uh, give our uh, followers experiences that they might want to try, like ghost hunting and robbing banks and things like that. Nice. Uh, it'll be great to have you here. Your insight on some of these stories coming up. Um, and of course, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to the Awesome Cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, good Google Play Podcast, and video version on the um, Awesome Cast uh, YouTube and Facebook page. Going live on a lot of those these days, including the Periscope and the uh, Sorgatron Media uh, Twitch uh, channel. Uh, trying to get out there and in front of more of you guys in different places, wherever you like to catch your, your video uh broadcast here every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern time more or less as long as the uh as long as the computer doesn't crash on us like it did tonight uh but hey you know windows Uh, (laughs) it knew that we were all updating our apple devices and decided to crap out on us uh but anyways maybe we're just over over taxing the network who knows also, you can check things out. Uh, awesome cast on the Twitter. We have a great Facebook group where you can uh, uh, join us, and, and you know we share a lot of things about our Apple devices being updated, or or uh, uh, stories through the week, or anything else around uh, technology, social media, video games, just geeky stuff. Uh, and you can guys can become a part conversation there. You can also support the show patreon.com slash awesome cast, um, including uh, Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level, Mike, Michael Fedor at the Fan of the Show dollar level. And you guys can support the show as well, patreon.com slash awesome cast as well. Uh, thank you guys for supporting us uh, uh, that way. Uh, and also, hey, I want to give a shout out, uh, first of all, to our streaming partners, riversedgepgh.com. Uh, where we're there uh, every Saturday at 9 a.m. They're rebroadcasting the show. And our other uh, streaming partner, the 405media.com, where we're there at 9 a.m. Fi- the other five days of the week, uh, Pacific time, noon here on the East Coast. Uh, so thank you to those guys. Also, hey, big mention, uh, somebody who who contributes a lot of, a lot of um, 
stories to the show and is really big on our, our Facebook group. Uh, Brandon is, uh, he's actually, uh, partic- he's, he's, he'll be a participant in the 2018 Special Olympics as part of the Team Missouri Bowling Team. Um, and we do have a link that we're going to be sharing in the show notes for this show and on social media. Uh, and you, it's a fundraising site for the trip, uh, for, for his part of the team uh, going to that. And he's been supporting the show for so long. So I, I wanted to kind of put it out there for you guys in the Awesome Cast universe to uh, support him back uh, in his endeavor to uh, participate in the uh, 2018 Special Olympics. So thanks so much, Brandon, for doing that. And I uh, hope we can get some people and, and get some funds your way for that. So let's get into the... So that, that was a kind of an initial awesome thing of the week, actually. Uh, but let's get into your guys' awesome things of the week. Um, Ch- Chilla, let's let's go phone with you. <laughs> so on the, on the day of, of Apple uh, OS updates... Um, I'm going to talk about the new Galaxy Note 8. Oh! So I, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed. And one of the things that actually on the on the Apple side of the house that has me looking at the X or the Plus devices is the the dual camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so with the camera zoom, the Note 8 has the same cameras, dual cameras on the back for for optical zoom. Um, so pretty impressive device. I I had to give back my Galaxy Note 7. Um, has the same kind of stylus, which I really, really enjoy. Um, they've added a bunch of features, which are pretty cool, where you can do kind of the Apple device. You know, I can sketch something in a, in a, in a message. The interesting thing is there's this cross device capable, so it creates everything as an animated GIF and then sends that over. Um, the thing that I really like, and I've actually been using at work a lot, um, someone calls or whatnot, you can just tap on the screen with, with your stylus um, and I can jot notes right on the front end of the screen with the pencil. It's pretty, pretty darn nice. And they've added um, transcription with the with the S Pen, so I can actually write right where the keyboard would normally be. And it's I have chicken scratch horrible writing, um, and it does a pretty darn good job of transcribing anything I write down. Um, I've used it for text messaging. I've used it for emails. Really, really nice work um, they did with the device. The one thing I will say is it is a bit large to hold in the hand. Yeah, um, hold, that, hold that up for the people on video to kind of see see that. There's no blue light over there. There's no blue light over there? Did we look? No, you're good. Okay. We got you. Um, so it is a little big in the hand. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I will say, and I know I'm probably the oddball here, I pick up my, my phone with my left hand i'm right-handed but i pick up my phone with my left hand all the time Mm -hmm. um and the way the fingerprint sensor is on the back it's like really awkward for me to reach my finger over to unlock i wish they would have centered it kind of where the samsung logo is or where it's on the um, what other devices the pixel those type of devices where it's dead center kind of on the back of the device where you would normally lift your put put your finger um in in my right hand, it's it's fine to kind of touch, mm-hmm. but to move, I don't know. Maybe I'm just strange to move my finger over this way. So if you're left-handed, like it's I, like, it's like my, you're pulling a partial uh, Vulcan yes. uh, sign mm-hmm. in order to do that. Um, it does have the the iris scanning, face scanning, mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff. Not a lot of the apps support the iris or facial scan. Everything, anything that supports the the fingerprint sensor, which I, which a lot of our stuff for work does, um, makes it work work pretty well. Um, it, it just does take a lot of getting used to, especially on the wider device, to be able to reach over and hit the fingerprint sensor. Um, so after a couple of days of testing, I mean, I've done screen recordings and documentation for work. The, the device is, is fast. It's responsive um, as well as it should be. Works with the Dex dock, um, which is pretty cool to just plug it in and start chugging away. Um, <clears throat> with kind of a full screen keyboard mouse experience, I'm I'm rather rather happy. Now the one thing, you know, I think we talked about it in a prior, uh, I don't know if it was a on Awesome Cast or or something extra, but they have the capability now to clone applications, where you can actually create like a copy of um, Facebook Messenger. Um, and it allows you to create a second identity with a second copy of the app. Um, I I was under the assumption that it was going to let me do it with any app, 
the app vendors actually have to support it. So you can only do it with a subset. I know, I know Messenger is one of them um, where you can actually hold down on the icon and say install second app. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns on dual messenger. It's mainly for messaging applications and social media. Um, so that works extremely well. The other thing that I will say is they've kind of updated their secure folder. So you can take a second copy of any app, put it in a secured folder, and people can't get to the application without an additional layer of security. Jeez. Um, I like it because if you want to put something like your Twitter account in there, so if you hand the phone to someone, um, say you unlock the phone, right, and you want to hand it to someone to use, in secure folder, they can't get into that folder without an additional password. Um, you can set up fingerprint sensor. You can set up pattern unlock like on Android. Um, I really like that feature, and you can actually make it, if you're using a pattern unlock, you can make it a different pattern unlock from the front end of the device. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been pretty darn happy with the device. Battery life's been great. Um, I've been using the device. Well, I did have it on the charger while I was at work, but now I'm at 92% right now. I don't know if you can see that. I, I, think, I think that it's in the way, but I just looked down, and I noticed this like, lineup of technology that you have going on here. <laughs> well, I really want the watch OS update. And yeah. I was at, my, my watch was at like 22%, mm -hmm. and it has to be at 50%. So I grabbed my watch plug or and, and showing off and we've talked about this uh, show show people your 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 wall of cords that you have I was there say sorg if you're missing anything it's right there <laughs> yeah so i carry this everywhere i go mm -hmm. um and, and kraus has one of these that he pulled out a couple weeks ago and he was here too so so i carry this everywhere i go it has um here's a usb c charger a 10 foot if you're on audio, it's a it's like a the cocoon grid. It it's like a bunch of elastic yeah. attached to like a hard cardboard. We've talked about this like a long time ago on the show, but just it's always fantastic to see it in action. He has every dongle on there that you would need. He's, yep, uh, he's a, pretty set. HDMI, USB, e two different kinds of Ethernet. Mm -hmm. um, yes, pretty much. I have like three foot cables, ten foot cables. <laughs> I have. USB cables that are like two in two to three inches. Jeez. Um, yeah, pretty much. Pretty and and a bunch of other like slip on adapters like that'll convert USB to to, to uh, lightning. Um, and I actually have started to invest in multiple of these. Mm -hmm. um, they make it at all different sizes. Um, and depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going or what bag I'm carrying, I may take and slide these in and out with different different presets of connectors nice that's how he keeps it that's how he keeps it straight it's great it's awesome you just need like a rack to a portable rack to put all those phones and and watch these yeah. the, i will say between the the note and the iphone if i if i because i worry about the screens mm -hmm. if i put the iphone behind the note with the iphone face into the back of the note these two actually slide in my pocket and fit pretty well <laughs> As long Chilla as I'm wearing no chiller problems. <laughs> and which which phone is that? Which iPhone is that? Is this 7? is the seven? But then I have the battery case, which gives right. Me so like hold. So these they're, they're both with cases. Hold those up next to each other so people can kind of get an idea of the size. So so oh, it's a little this taller, way. little little bit wider. So but it is it is edge to edge, pretty much edge to edge screen. There's mm. a small black bar on the bottom and small black bar on the top, but still less so than usual. So I mean, when you put when you put the iPhone on top. Mm -hmm. of the device i mean you're getting you're getting a significant amount of extra mm -hmm. screen definitely so it'll be interesting to see how that compares to the x here in a month too so uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh chris what's your uh, awesome thing of the week well uh, mike you know i see the the second coming of the arcade mm -hmm. and um uh, a couple weeks back i know you you uh did my first road trip to orlando on, on awesome cast um, for a, a haunted attraction down there. Um, I'd like to say we need to go to Las Vegas next. Mm -hmm. um, in Vegas, they're building a, a 21 acre virtual reality playground, basically uh, called Area 15. Um, like Area 51, there's a lot of secrecy around Area 15 in Vegas. Um, not exactly sure exactly the um, experience that you're, you're going to get. 
Um, but they're saying that you'll be able to step into movies like Blade Runner and Mad Max and, and, uh, and uh, really push the envelope of, of virtual reality tech technology. So, um, I, you know, I'd like to put it out here to the awesome casters that we really need something like this in Pittsburgh. So mm -hmm. somebody needs to get on that. I was going to say, we have things like Dave and Buster's, but then we have like retro arcades and things like that. But, and we do have a casino here. So, I mean, you know, along those lines. But, I mean, it's, um, and with all the high tech companies around, it seems to make sense to have something like that. I mean, we have to be turning people out of Carnegie Mellon that yeah. know how to do this. So. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how many warehouses do we have? We that... have tons of space, tons yeah. of space yeah. for this kind of stuff. And it's cheap. It's cheap. So, um, you know, let's put something in it that, that's fun. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you know, locally here we have looking, looking for group. And so it's great that you can, you know, stop in, get access to technology you might not be able to afford. Um, I think with virtual reality technology, even though the visor headset costs are coming down mm -hmm. greatly, um, it's still out of reach for uh, most individuals. And, and to have kind of this super experience of, of being able to be dropped into a space that's been mapped and, and created uh, around a, you know, a, an intellectual property such as Blade Runner or something like that. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Um, so I guess did, did they have a an idea of when it might be able to launch? I mean, they, they're still building this thing, right? They're still building this thing, um, and then there's not a whole lot of details out. Um, but uh, I, I'm gonna guess if I had to say, probably some at some point next year, mm -hmm. it'll be up and running. There already is a space within one of the casinos, as as you mentioned. Uh, Caesars has a a space called Link, um, which is a virtual reality playground. Um, and uh, the star attraction of that is you get dropped into a haunted house and mm -hmm. you have to survive the haunted house. This article says, yeah, <clears throat> March 2019 is when it's Jeez. slated to open. 2019, okay, yeah. so I'm off. So it's, it's not too far. Bit. Yeah, it's not too far off. Um, but, and you think about the work they have to do. I'm, well, yeah, I think building the place plus implementing all the technology. So, and I wonder what the um, run up for technology is. Like when, you know, by the time you get something like that installed, you know how how far ahead did, did you miss the next thing <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah you know. yeah so and, and, and you know you could do a lot of it you know think about all the space like a universal studios does for all of its we're going to drop you into the movie you know experiences right versus what this is probably going to do in virtual reality you know it's really kind of providing i think a lot of that you know drop in you know immersive idea but without the physical space. Yeah, I think, you know, you're looking at the, they're taking a, a blank box and they're really converting that blank box by, you know, mapping it into whatever it could be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. I, I just picture this space that has like, it's like the Matrix with all the little, the, the pods. Yes. <laughs> and everyone's, everyone's just in this little pod uh, it's really, sucked in. It's really just the holodeck or something, <laughs> you know, everybody's in headsets. It's like the one we saw a, little, a few weeks ago where it was in, I think, Germany, where everybody has like, like blaster guns and fake swords and they're in a 3D space walking around with their helmets. And I'm just like, you're just going to box somebody with that sword, right? So, yeah, we'll see. And there's things like the Skyrocket. Skyrocket was supposed to have uh, VR helmets on it at Kennywood by the end of the year. And it didn't seem like, like, you know, over the summer Scarehouse was talking to uh, a guy down there about it. And, um, and they're like, yeah, we're just kind of still figuring out the technology where we're hoping to have it by the end of the year. And it just never got figured out. I think you, you have two, two issues. I think the, the technology is still, still very new mm -hmm. and you don't have a, a whole lot of, um, developers that are, um, you know, able to really program for that, that particular mm -hmm. technology. But the second issue that you have is that it really impacts people in different ways. And so if you're wearing a headset, particularly on a roller coaster, I mean, come on, you know, you're already getting motion sickness from, from the roller coaster, potentially, um, you're adding a second, a, a second layer of that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I'll be interested to see where that goes. Um, so I got my hands on something this week. Um, work hard Pittsburgh. You know, I do a lot of live streaming with them through the rig and everything and and we've been kind of talking about some new things to install and and they went and and got some new stuff and uh one of the things is they they switched everything from mac to pc and they installed a program called vmix that i haven't really actually heard of i think a whole lot of um you know and we use wirecast here for basically what you're seeing on the video where we're streaming 
um, as well. Of course, using Restream.io to put you put you put it in different places like YouTube and Periscope and things if you're finding us over there. Um, but this is basically like a Wirecast like video switcher situation and uh, real solid. Um, you could really kind of do a lot with it just by the trial version of it to try it out. Uh, again, you can produce, you can stream to things like YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook Live straight from the program. Uh, you can record locally. It, de it deals with a lot of high-end stuff. It works with uh, NDI, which is a really great interface for bringing video over networks. And there's a lot of um, options I'm seeing, like um, you know, things like they have a social version of vMix uh, with social media integration. They have a call one that looks like a nice replacement for Google Hangout if you did a lot of uh, podcasting through that. Um, you, you have a replay for live sports productions. So these guys kind of came out of, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they came out of nowhere, but they have a really interesting, um, like, it's different levels of what you need versus Wirecast is kind of two levels, it seems, right? Of, you know, the lower end and, oh, you need this one feature, you need to buy the higher end one. Um, there's like five different steps of what you can get with uh, with vMix. Um, so it could be nice for like a nonprofit that wants to get into some video or something to have a low-end software that just does what they need, right? Versus I want to use this to do something on the level of an Apple Keynote. You know, you get that higher $2,000 version or whatever it is. Actually, it goes up to $1,200 for the Pro version. And here, here's, here's kind of the, like your your boxes here like for sixty dollars for sixty dollars you can get a really um looks like a really um decent basic hd probably honestly would probably do most of the things that we're doing with wirecast right now and uh and then from there you can you can bump up and do a lot of other things um you know get different resolutions um and have a lot a lot more it's actually up to four four inputs um which is fine for basically what we do here for this show Maybe not the Wrestling Mayhem show. We have a little bit more. Um, and really flexible. Like You can bring desktops like we do when we bring up other websites and things like that on here. So uh, vmix.com if you want to check it out. I, th I think it's a really cool option for people to want to get into the video production side of things. So, so it was pretty, I was pretty impressed going through some of their like screen screenshots. They, they really spent some time giving it the Windows 10 look and feel. Mm-hmm. Um, the other interesting thing is that they do have desktop capture for Mac. So you can still bring in a Mac. Right, right. But it doesn't actually operate on, Mac, operate on a Mac. Wirecast is, you can pick one platform or the other. Um, I want to actually want to pull up real quick. We, and this is, um, let's see, they they, they, they they got rid of the Black Magic card that we, or you know, ATEM producer that we're using. That was basically the hardware that switched. Mm hmm and they put a card into an i7 computer, hooked it up to this thing, got a really nice uh, Behringer X32 digital soundboard, basically, um, which, you, which is nice because you can bring that up on like a, a tablet device or an iPad and you can control everything. If you're on the Wi-Fi, like uh, Buzzy was controlling from the other room, he's listening to our, our live stream on Public Source on Thursday, and he was actually adjusting some of the EQ while I was going. You know, because you know, because you don't really know until you get in there and you get everybody hooked up. What exactly is gonna, you know, everything's gonna sound like, and uh, you know, it, it's pretty cool that we can like do an event and have somebody from you know anywhere at the event basically um, be ready to go. Oops, my video went wrong over here, um, but no, we and we use this for for kind of the first run um over at public source so with uh dr uh, karen hacker who does um 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 public uh public health here in the city um so really good a really cool place to uh kind of get a first crack at that uh as well so there and there it is finally there you go there's a little sample of it over on public source um so again using vixias and things you know kind of lower end cameras but they're great for you know a lot of the visuals that we need so and we'll see what happens. We're going to be using a lot of this and a lot of other stuff at Hilltopless this week. So a shout out for that. Hilltopless is going to be uh, Friday up at Grandview Park. Hilltopless.co if you want to check out more information. And uh, the cool kids are headlining. You know, big hip hop group from Pittsburgh here. And uh, Give Camp is actually doing their final presentations there. And there's yeah. creative drinks and all kinds of things. It's going to be a big uh, neighborhood celebration up there at the Hilltop. So really looking forward to be a part of that. So, But in this neighborhood of Beachview, we got some great pizza. And I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. 
supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for a good long time here. So thank you so much to those guys. Um, they're right up here, like I said, up the street. They also got locations in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie PA over on Main Street. And, and the big news this week, East Liberty is coming up as a location. So uh, Rico and the guys expanding uh, as well. So uh, there's a picture on their social media of the location. I don't know exactly where it is out there, uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to if I need to take a meeting to go grab some slice, even on that end of the neighborhood. I'm impressed that they let somebody local back into East Liberty. So. Oh, <laughs> <good thing>. um, <laughs> super. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Speaking of slice, uh, I, I put this in the notes and you've completely disregarded it. Oh, uh, the Incline is actually doing a nominate your favorites to help create the ultimate Pittsburgh pizza bracket. And they've got uh, voting options open through Thursday. So you've got a couple of days to, to go ahead and tell them that Slice on Broadway has the best pizza and why they have the best pizza. And I'll be dropping those links on our social and in the chat room as well. There you go. So go, go tell them. Uh, support our friends. I've been supporting this show. Uh, and support slice on Broadway.com. All right, let's get into, we got a little bit of a local focus here. Uh, Chris, you had, well, we mentioned a little bit already, but tell us a little bit more about the uh, Red Light District Tour. So uh, there's a great event that's in its second year here in Pittsburgh. It's called Doors Open Pittsburgh. And what it is, is um, it's, a, it's an architectural tour, in essence, of downtown Pittsburgh. They've added two neighborhoods, the Strip District, um, and the north side this year as well. So there's three neighborhoods on the tour this year. Uh, and you get to go into buildings that you would not normally get to go into. Mm -hmm. Also new this year for Doors Open Pittsburgh is they're offering what they're calling insider tours. And Mike, I've been working on stories in the red former red light district. And we're talking about 1970s Pittsburgh. It's a lot grittier. Mm -hmm. It's a lot seedier. It's now called the Cultural District, so that's where we're at. It we're was on a whole, Liberty Avenue and Penn was, Avenue. It was a whole different culture back then. It was a whole different culture. Um, but uh, I originally started researching these stories when I was working at the Pittsburgh Foundation. One of my first projects uh, was to pull um, old pictures and compare them with, with new pictures at the 25th anniversary of the Cultural Trust. Mm-hmm. And when I started researching these things, I went to the to Google Archives, which I, I lament losing Google Archives. Um, it uh, it was a beautiful resource, and and I now had to you know bite the bullet and, and pay for newspapers.com instead. Oh. But <laughs> but uh, in Google Archives, I started uh, hitting a lot of the pit, old Pittsburgh Press newspaper stories, and they read like a script out of Goodfellas. I mean, it was just interesting characters from mobsters to uh, retired firefighter uh, running massage parlors to an iron worker that was the vice king of Pittsburgh uh, who was assassinated in an alley behind the former Tambellini's restaurant. I mean, th these were just amazingly interesting stories. I celebrate the rebirth of Pittsburgh. I think it's wonderful that, that Pittsburgh is... is um, growing, how nice it is uh, downtown these days. But I think we miss our history if we don't celebrate some of the, the little underside of, of Pittsburgh. Um, and, and so I will be conducting uh, three tours at uh, 10 a.m., noon, and 2 o'clock. Uh, leaving from Market Square, the tour will go through Liberty Avenue and Penn Avenue along with a few of the back alleys. That's about a mile uh, walking uh, it takes about an hour and a half on the tour, and I will introduce you to some of the places that are still there that used to be Red Light District, and some that aren't there because they have been replaced by um, new cultural institutions or or um, brand new gleaming downtown buildings. Um, and so you'll get to see see and hear some of these these stories from the 1970s to early 80s of uh, what used to be um, the place where you, you spent your take-home pay <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> um, and, and I feel like, like cause I started going to school down, downtown around 2000, and I remember having the bus stop in front of like the porn the porn shop, you know, at, at, at the end of Smithfield. And absolutely. there was like two more down the street. One was huge. Now it's a art gallery. 
right? Yes. Most and, of these actually are are cultural trust properties, and they've, oh, turned, yeah. they've been turned into something um, artistic related. Some of them are studios, like you said. Some of them are event spaces or meeting spaces. Um, there is one. There is one that is still left that has not been transformed yet. Until about a year ago, you could actually still see the um, the uh, uh, faded out massage parlor um, uh, text on on the window. Really? Um, but uh, it is it has now been cleaned up uh, at least. But the building is still still not inhabited by a um, by an institution that. Uh, uh, changes its purpose, so to speak. So. I'm always fascinated about that too. I mean, we we look at you know things like Ease Liberty. We you know make comments about um, something that's transformed in the last ten years into this kind of tech hub, um, you know, for better or worse, um, you know, things like that. And and even like looking at neighborhoods like here in Beachview um, and seeing you know seeing seeing a fresh coat of paint, seeing what it used to be. You know, of this building itself, we had some, the former owners of this building come in. And tell us about how they they used to sell produce out of here to all the hotels and everything you know in the area, and and all the other things this thing used to be, and now it's this kind of thing. And uh, it, I mean, I think it's also interesting is that it wasn't always the red light district either. Mm -hmm. I mean, those buildings had a purpose before um, they had a, a sort of seedier purpose, and now they've gone gone to a cultural purpose. And so it's that constant transformation that Pittsburgh has has uh, undergone and a lot of this has happened um you know red light district is over about 30 years now but you, you mentioned east liberty lawrenceville um they're within the last 10 beach is going through a transformation now mm -hmm. um you know you you really can um you know hold some of that history as you're as you're creating new uses uh here in the city and i'm ex i'm just excited to share some of these stories that i i found i think I think you'll find them entertaining. Um, tour uh, costs only twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, the tickets are available at uh, doors open, pgh .org. There you go. Go get them, and we'll we'll share the links on social media and the notes for uh, this episode as well, so you guys can partake in that. Really cool. Yeah, please come on down and and see a little a little part of the city you may not have heard about yet. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, sounds like a date night chiller. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, awesome. You know, sex, murder. That's that's date night. There you go. The one, we went. We actually went out to for a, for a date, and a buddy of mine was playing at Papa J's downtown. It's, ah, it's been closed yes. since, and that was yes. one of the oldest brothels. It was. It was the mm -hmm. oldest brothel Pittsburgh. in in the city. Wow. Yes. I love playing, especially in, in cities like this. Just going to a place to say, "What did this used to be?" You know, we always talk about the ceilings and how they're very ornamental sometimes, and. The, the, the building across the street, actually, from Papa J's Pavilion X, which is a new event center, high-tech mm -hmm. uh, transformation, that building actually had a tunnel uh, during Prohibition where they would offload um, wow. a hooch, basically, and get it to the, the speakeasies around the city. Uh, it was a way to get it from the river um, into the city was through a tunnel that went to that building. So, That's awesome. You know, it's just things you don't see anymore. So. That's great. Um, also things kind of changing here in Pittsburgh. We had another story that our, our friends at Techburg, uh, uh, Andy, uh, who, who'd been here, uh, um, Andy Quayle, that's been on the show, uh, not too long ago. Uh, but, uh, we, you know, and we, I think we talked about this maybe even last week with Susan from, uh, Ohio, Ohio Linux Fest, uh, tech shop is, uh, been in trouble for a while. Check, we, 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 we talked about tech shop when they were coming to town. Uh, Rob De La Creta, the original co-host of the show, um you know was really big on that because he's a he's a builder now he's in portland uh but anyway <laughs> but uh apparently tech shop pittsburgh is, is going to be closing but members and staff are looking at a rebirth under a new brand uh so they are going to be moving they're looking at spaces last i knew and i'm trying to remember what they're calling the new the new venture here um but it, it, you know and this is the place where you know between 3d printers and we need like a, a water cut you know you know laser cutter any you know, kind of saw like you want any kind of saw you want base. yeah yeah, yeah. We've, we've done the tour of them there's an awesome chat where um we we did with les giles over there and he did an ipad walk around with us in a tour and i've seen everything in person as well um so it was a really cool space so so good to see um and the new the new venture is going to be called proto haven um yeah the prototype haven uh so so look look out for that name in the coming months um, but they said that's going to be uh, funded by a combination of member dues and corporate sponsorships, similar to what Tech Shop is going to do. It's just something not under the Tech Shop 
franchise anymore because I think between location and how the model work, I, I think they were having some problems keeping it afloat. I think the costs are just too high in the location that they were. They need to find that, a way. That's the thing. They yeah. need to find find a way to reduce those costs, and then that membership uh, model will probably work. For they're them. right in the complex with Google and UPMC yeah. Enterprises, uh, which is a, a, their technology you, wing. You basically. gotta imagine that the you know rent. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it has to be some of the highest in town, right? It's got to be there, you know. That's, right. that's Google Central. So. Well, you, you, based on the fact that I, the, the parking garage there is free for up to three hours, you you know they're making buku money off rent to be able to give free parking for people to come and shop or go to the, the workout facility. So, yeah, definitely it has to be ridiculous i think the challenge that they'll have in converting is probably not finding space i think you know there's plenty of space around uh pittsburgh that are is far far cheaper it's actually being able to equip that uh new space uh, because the equipment as far as i understand is owned by the parent company mm -hmm. um, and so they would have to buy that equipment to keep it right um, we had talked to tech shop um you know six months ago because i said man i need one of these down in in the mon valley um and what we found is a as a possible solution is we have a, a a vocational technical center that has all the hard stuff, has the saws and the paint bays and things like that. And our intermediate unit actually has a um, a fab shop, a, a, a tech lab that has the three D printers, the uh, laser cutters, the water cutters, and things like that. And if you can manage to put the two together, you almost have tech shop. Um, and so. You know, I think if they're creative, they'll be able to find a solution here in Pittsburgh as well. It's definitely something. Yeah, t Tech Shop is a great idea, and it's great but it's idea. it's also maybe just a demonstrative model that other people can tweak to whatever fits their region. Because again, it's not going to fit every situation in every town, right? Right. So right, but definitely if you could get to it, it was it had the resources where you could prototype if you were trying to design a new product or if you just wanted to, you know etch your grandmother's name in, in some wood, you could do that too. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. So let's touch base on a couple other stories that were submitted to us this week. First of all, I love this video that came up and this was submitted by our, our man Brandon uh, out there. Uh, and maybe this is how he's getting ready for his Special Olympics uh, 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 trip here. Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> there are Star Wars workout equipment. Um, let me get this video. There you go. Uh, so we're talking like uh, 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 kind of dumbbells with stormtroopers on them, medicine balls that look like the Death Star. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty ace amazing. The company, it, the company on it is is what's involved here. And <laughs> yep, there you go. If you wanted to lift, it, there's a yoga mat that's uh, you know Han Solo carbonite, of which course. is kind of creepy. Without girl sprawled on it, actually, um, <laughs> maybe even creeper with that guy doing whatever he's doing. But uh, yeah, there's your medicine ball death star. Um, so you know, if you want to be super, super, <laughs> if you if you've ever wanted to do yoga over a frozen body, now's your chance. Um, but uh, the I don't know if this is the Disney machine getting behind it or something. That now you're getting all of the licenses. Uh, happening with Star Wars now. Well, uh, you know what they won't put it on, huh? <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> Sorg, is that going to get you to the gym? Is it, you can lift Death Stars. <laughs> and lift Death Stars like this. This ain't no moon, baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see what we get. What we get out of that? Oh no! Now I'm going to get another subscription to Men's Health. <laughs> why do you send me that? Are you are you sending me messages? Is that's what's happening? Men's Health. Um, I don't know why I get it, but, uh, anyways, uh, another one, Doug Durda sent us one. Uh, I saw this floating around here. Um, I think in our Slack before the show, uh, but apparently, and, and, and Chilla, maybe you can speak to this a little bit. Apparently Google will delete your backup if you haven't used your Android phone in 60 days. Now you're somebody who's, who's definitely kind of using multiple devices and trying things out. You know, I, I, I see all the journalists podcasts I listen to are going to complain about this. I don't know. Is it that big of a deal? If you haven't used your phone, if for you 60 haven't days, used your phone for sixty is, days, is anything is anything current anyway? Oh, current or you know, is that a reasonable? Like, obviously, you've moved on to something else. Or? Well, don't and don't forget too. Anything like you put in Google Drive or Photos synced up, it's not that portion of the 
back up. Right. So, so what, what, what are you? What are you really well, yeah, what are you backing you? up? Just your settings? Well, it'll back up settings. It'll back up some app data depending on how you set it up. And and the other thing that I mean that I'll speak to to Samsung about is, so when you get a Samsung device out of the box, it comes with this. And I don't think it's. Oh, yep, here it is. <laughs> so it comes it. with <laughs> it comes with this crazy looking USB adapter. And what it is is it allow it's actually makes it pretty much go USB C to USB C. Mm-hmm. You can plug two phones together, and Samsung will actually pull all of the data off the phone, and take it off the actual phone to the new phone. This sounds like the FireWire transfer method in the old Max. So kind of, and what it, but they've actually developed it where you can plug it into another Samsung device. You can plug it into any other Android device. You can plug it into an iPhone, and it can access certain amounts of data and pull that off. So I just, um, if you like, I said, if you haven't used the device in sixty days, is there that much? data that you need to get back that isn't stored somewhere else i don't i don't know so don't throw it in a drawer don't um you know don't expect it to be there if you're taking a two-month trip to another country and decide to use a burner phone uh, there's there's one i don't but then again if you're taking like a two-month trip to another country uh, i don't know yeah i i just look at it as like if i put it in a drawer and i pulled it back out prior to my trip I would already have to, I mean, it's not like it's going to wipe the device, right? Mm-hmm. The data is still going to be on that device. You're going to have to run Google play and update 200 and some apps. It's probably getting an OS patch. I mean, there's so many things that you have to do. If you pulled a device out that was off for 60 days anyway, I, I'm just not seeing that. It would need to sit there for a day to catch up anyways. Yeah. A little bit, maybe even to get on that work. I, I'm, I'm I'm just not seeing what you're. So what you're, you're really telling losing. me you're telling me that this is a reasonable situation. Yeah, because I mean, even if you went to another Android device, mm-hmm. like your Wi-Fi networks are going to be updated by using that other. Like, because when you pull down a backup, it grabs like your old Wi-Fi networks so, and so all here's, that kind of stuff. So here's the use case uh, according to this Lifehacker uh, article. Apparently, this redditor. Um, uh, they they sold their Google branded uh, Nexus 6, 6P, opting to use an iPhone until they could find a suitable replacement for their Android device, which obviously took more than sixty days. Is that the two months time span doing? But I still don't understand. So they so wait they they got rid of their 6P and got an iPhone. Mm-hmm. They weren't going to restore the Google back up to the iphone no 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 but they were going to get another android device eventually but i guess i see weird so they lost some wi-fi settings or something or maybe that's the only thing they were using google for because you're right i I, why wouldn't i just put all the google stuff on my iphone and and continue using all that backup data right yeah i'm 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 still confused as to what what did they actually lose Mm -hmm. like because you're not going to lose your bookmarks they don't really go those into are this either. stored in Chrome, like a Chrome back. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to hear what, what did they actually lose? Mm-hmm. I could see maybe they lost their, their Wi-Fi networks that they had connected to, and if there was long passwords on them. I have. I, I, <laughs> I, mean, know, I, have I don't know. I have a Nexus I haven't t- touched for a couple months, so I'm curious. Yeah, what's up? What about photos? They're in. They're in, they're in Google, Google photos. photos. Are they? Yeah. 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 Now, is it something that's a setting that like Google's like, okay, we're we're backing this up for you, but then they include that as part of the oop, you haven't used it for a while, so getting rid of it. No, because I have photos that I haven't looked at across multiple devices. Would it be a setting issue though? Like But I see them all on my iPhone. So unless unless he like went left the device, went on the iPhone and to Sorg's point, didn't install any of the Google's app, Google apps. Mm-hmm. But even then, like I don't know. I'm guessing things like photos and G like Gmail is not going to self destruct if you don't use it in 60 no, days. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just picture this atomic bomb inside the Google networks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hotmail kind of did that because when I switched over to 
Gmail from Hotmail. Like I had the option that I could forward my messages and I did that for a short period and then people stopped emailing me. At the, the only stuff I was getting at my Hotmail account was literally like spam and junk mail. Mm-hmm. So I shut it down. But you shut it down. But I got the email saying, yeah, we're going to do this. Um, I don't know. But, uh, you know, if anybody wants to sit sit around for 60 days and let us know what happens to their Android device, let us know. It, it, it will be an experiment. What? I need an Android device first. We we have one at home. We have a couple at home, actually. We do? Yeah, we have a Nexus and we have a 6S. Okay. Whose are those? Or S6? X, who's, S6? Whose are those? Well, they, well, one was Chilla's, so... <laughs> Have they ever been in my possession? <laughs> no, because you don't like VR. Uh, but anyways, um, which I got really mad at somebody that, that put up like the, the iPhone X and the uh, the Galaxy S6. This is basically the same specs. Yeah, that, I'm tired of seeing that meme. As far as the augmented reality. And no, the, no well, not that part. But it was like, <laughs> no, it was like we had... Number of cores, megapixels, oh, uh, yeah, storage, yeah. The, all the, the oh, wireless, oh, charging. wireless charging. I'm wireless like, charging. It's like, yeah, no. Yeah. I, I wanted to respond, but I didn't want to be that guy to be like, I have a 6, or S6? S6. I have a Galaxy Axis S6, and it doesn't even compare to my S6. 6S phone. Son of a... Stupid names! <laughs> jeez! What are you doing? Uh, it's, it's a letter and a number, so oh, you can handle this. <laughs> yes, but it's like the opposite of the way the iPhone one is. I'm broken. I'm bro- what's awesome. That? Cast is brought to you today by he, the letter he, S. He broke the internet. Do you think that he can actually speak? <laughs> yes, yes. If you didn't well, hear the bleep, we did have a, a, a little blip, and we're not finishing this live online. So, a little special thing for the people that actually download us. Well, and and I wonder, is there something else in that device? Because they said they announced today that they're going to increase the speed of the wireless charging through a firmware update. And then at the same time this morning, a bunch of MIT alumni announced that they've actually developed the distance charger and it's going to work with the new iPhone wireless charger. Oh, so there might be some special features we don't know about yet. Kind of like what they did with the, uh, the uh, Apple home that we never heard anything else about. So the, so the device there, the device they announced today will, cost less than two hundred dollars and it will let you charge the iphone they they didn't give a distance amount i didn't see it in the article but it will actually you could put this device like on your nightstand and put the phone anywhere around it and then you're you're good to charge so i'm wondering are we going to see more to come and is Sorg going to break more things? <laughs> there was a camera in the way. I was trying to get the other camera out of the way. <laughs> I didn't know which one was live. Yeah, Don't worry so, about it. So I'm wondering, are we? is there stuff that they haven't really covered mm-hmm. that's in here? Never know. Um, one thing they did fix, I know you, you're probably, you, it looks like you're pretty happy about. Apple is increasing the App Store cellular download limit to 150 megabytes, which I also like because today is the day where my, my Fios internet uh, got turned off by request. Uh, just just want to clarify. Um, uh, but uh, and, and I'm basically running it off of an iPad Pro my entire house. Nice. So, so you can't, so when you're at home, you can't download anything over 100 meg. Well, until today. Yeah, I guess until today. Oh, 150. So that doesn't really help when I need to update, like, you know, Mortal Kombat X. Uh, <laughs> well, it'll be interesting because Mortal Kombat X should get a differential upgrade, mm-hmm. so it'll just grab the diff. It won't do so if it's a, if it's a one gig app and you've downloaded it in there, mm-hmm. they'll show the the full size, but it will grab it. I'm actually downloading package. like a hundred megs or whatever. Yeah. So okay, I can deal with that. Um, but also realizing like, oh, that's not going to get up uh, backed up either. No. So you have I want, to come in here to back up. The right. Well, even that's why Chris is holding it right now. Um, because I, I brought it in, I brought, (laughs) what is that giant tablet in your lap over there? Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So we could do the iOS update today, for instance. So, and it's, it was, yeah, cause you definitely won't get that without Wi-Fi. Cause that, Mm -hmm. that update today, I think was two gig for the iPads. So the other interesting thing that happens is, um, you know, I'm guessing I'm, my phone is not going to get backed up unless it's sitting here on the Wi-Fi. Each day, so I have to come to work to back everything up. Well, right? Do you have your? So what you can do is, you are you talking to iCloud backup or just 
back oh, up to your whatever it wants to back up. So what you can do yeah, is iCloud. if you're com- do you still you still do you still have a Wi-Fi router at home? Uh yeah. So if you put your Mac and your iPhone on the same network, they'll find each other and it'll back up when the iPhone's plugged in and it backs up to the Mac. What if what if I was thinking about this? You got a really long. What Ethernet if? Cable. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you know, I've already considered that because it's only four blocks away, and I'm like, how long can I cross the train track with that? Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, no, no. It, it was it was a little bit of of you know. So if my phone ho- gets on the hotspot for my iPad, does it think it's on the Wi-Fi and it will do a it backup? It will get a, It will do a backup and it will. Grab oh data. yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing. I mean, I'm surprised that Apple hasn't done something about that because it knows it's another iOS device providing. Mm-hmm. We've used that trick at work to upgrade. That's what I feel. And I feel like like app, app updates and things like that. Because I mean, otherwise the Apple TV, the Xbox is not going to know. And we're already pulling down a good 130 gigabytes between all of our phones. I don't think it's going to notice when we start streaming a, a little bit of Netflix and Xbox that we do. So I, I was surprised, and I never, I never knew what the original iOS Max was. It was 10 meg, and then in, and then they upped it to 50. Wow! And then in 2013, they upped it from 50 to 100. It's amazing. So now, four years later. We're at 150 meg. No. What? No, yes. no. I'm, we're just making. I'm. I'm calling shots with the producer. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> um, also, real quick, um, I got to talk about. So, I, I about a week ago, I deleted Snapchat. Right. I'm like, I'm not going to use this. Uh, like, okay, I get stuff from like Katie and maybe one other person. Right. Um, so I, I deleted it, and then I saw a story about Bitmoji, and of course they purchased Bitmoji. I love Bitmojis. I always send my wife the the Bitmojis. I got the little version of me doing things, right? It's entertaining. I I told her it was Tuesday today with with the Bitmojis. And I saw this this article on The Verge about they added 3D AR Bitmojis on here. So I installed Snapchat again, and I started playing with Snapchat, and I'm drinking virtual coffee in the studio now and sending videos. Uh, yeah. And I've been doing this like all weekend. <laughs> I saw you on a skate. Were you on a skateboard on was, one of them? I was on a skateboard at Kennywood Sunday night. <laughs> so does it, I'm guessing it lets you like record it and then save it off to your. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I don't roll. give two crabs about sending stuff to Snapchat. <laughs> I just want to make the thing and put it everywhere else. So now it's simply a media making tool. And then I've noticed so far, it appears that, uh, it, it, it appears that they do change it. At least there was a couple new ones over the weekend. Um, so now I want to get check rid of the in. old ones. I, I, I don't know like what the cycle is for that, but I think they're, they're always kind of cycling stuff, aren't they? Um, so, so I think this is the new thing is like, what is my little guy going to do now? I loved, I posted one and uh, I think it was me dancing because I had pumpkin latte, everything at, at sheets. And uh, my videographer uh, responded on Facebook. This is uh, actually very scary. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so if you want a mini you i think i would second that ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on look at him he's he's so entertaining look at him just uh and it, it's just so cartoony and, and then you can actually like it actually tracks and you can go like around them and over them um it, it's it's pretty interesting it, yes Oh, no, I can't do that, actually. Um, but I can see it from here. You can see it. <laughs> you guys have seen my videos over the last couple of days. <laughs> I think this crew knows it. Uh, but if you want to check it out, I got some check my videos over on the Twitter and, and my Facebook page, Sorgatron on Twitter. Um, or I, 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 did, I think I posted it on Instagram. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Snapchat. Anyways, um, so uh, that's all our stuff for this week. Hilltop us this week. Uh, this Friday, you can check out hilltopless.co. I'll be there. There'll be a lot of techie things happening and some cool hip-hop, too. Um, and I'll be streaming, and hopefully I'm not going to be completely stressed out because it's going to be a pretty big stream. Um, and where can people find your walking tour again? Uh, get your tickets at doorsopenpgh.org. Uh, the event's also on Facebook as well, and I think uh, Missy will drop that into the show notes by this yep. point. Yep. So uh, check out the show notes. Come on down. It's uh, October 7th and 8th. Uh, you'll have a great time. There you go. And, of course, chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitters. John's chill on the Facebook. 
There you go. And again, check out everything at awesomecast.com. This and all of our interviews. Uh, we just got in the can uh, coming up. Of course, our interview with uh, uh, James from Mega Cat Studios, who was on the show here a couple weeks ago. Uh, Cynthia Klosky, we just talked with uh, this past Friday. That's going to be coming up on the Awesome Chat. So subscribe there. Check out some great interviews. We got some good ones in the works here in the coming months. And we're filling out October pretty good for guests. I think we might have one slot left if, uh, if anybody wants to hop in there um, and to be co-hosts here on the Awesome Cast. So we're going to be looking at November dates beyond that. Uh, so looking forward to, to all the cool stuff and all the guests coming out. Thank you again, Chris Whitlash, for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.